There are three ways of being in business that I've noticed uh, over the you know, 13 years that I've been teaching business and seeing people, um, you know, try to grow a business or, or how they operate. So uh, the first way is uh, what I'm just going to call conventional or fixed mindset. Uh, if you, by the way, I'm still coming up with terms for these three different ways. So I'm, those of you who are wordsmiths or like playing with words, you can comment below when you, as you listen to these and come up with words for me. Thank you. Um, so this fixed or conventional way is kind of borrowing from uh, the mindset book by Carol Dweck, where she talks about fixed mindset, which is this, this very sneaky, I think all of us have it to some degree very sneaky way of of operating uh but thinking where it's like you are afraid to be to, you're afraid to fail you you're you, because you're afraid to fail or to because your results you've tied your results to your identity and it comes very early on because we have grades and awards um and people are highlighted in class and uh or people tell you, um, oh, you're you, you know, you're you're the best. Or maybe you have strict parenting or something like that. I, I don't know how it comes, but basically, I am the best, and I cannot show myself to be anything less than that. Or I have a certain standard, and you know, it's like I don't want to experiment because, you know, I, the first thing I do something has got to look good, I especially look good to other people, but also look good to myself. And so how that happens in business, how, how that gets applied to business is people kind of start off and they have to have perfect branding, perfect copywriting, perfect design, perfect funnel, sales funnel. Um, or they have this fantasy that that's possible. It's like, okay, I'm going to start a business now. So I'm going to pay the $10,000 to various consultants to help me create the ideal looking really good looking website, copy, sales process, funnel, marketing, you know, design, everything. And so what happens is these, this mindset falls for the various ads that were presented. Oh, you just have to do this to get a bunch of clients. Um, part of what I'm going to call this is the means to an end way of being in business, uh, 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 of marketing, really, which is um, I just have to like, do certain things, set up certain systems for me to look good, number one, and for me to just convince people to work with me. And if those certain funnels are set up, the systems automation and ex excellent copywriting and design is set up, then it just kind of like ATM machine, right? Like it just kind of like you put it out there and then clients find me and then I can do the meaningful work because I'm not here to do marketing. That's not I'm just here to do the meaningful work with clients. Have you ever told yourself that? Like that's, that's, I got trained to do this coaching work or this facilitation work, or that's really what I want to do. I don't care the marketing stuff. Let someone else take care of it. Fixed mindset. Let someone else take care of it, right? That's their job, right? I'm not going to learn to do it myself. That's ridiculous, right? And of course you end up paying thousands or tens of thousands, oftentimes, and then it doesn't work. <laughs> that's the sad part you pay all this money and spend all this time and most of the time it doesn't work why because why doesn't it work let me explain this it's really strange to me too I, I have to like i'm still working out why it doesn't work but there's a couple of reasons why one it's not really authentic to you because probably the consultants are giving you the words and the way of thinking about your business and the way of niching or whatever design everything's not really authentic to you so you don't really you feel like an imposter this is where imposter syndrome comes in like you feel like an imposter because it looks so good on this on the outside and you're doubtful whether or not you're ground you have grounded experience to really meet that identity again fixed mindset stuff right like so you set up this amazing identity and then you're kind of fearful and your pricing and everything's it kind of feels a little off feels doesn't feel really grounded so that's that's the yeah you know, that's the one way of being in business that a lot of people kind of fall into. They don't know any better. Okay, and then on the other opposite end of the spectrum, 
It's one in the spectrum. And this is this is all spectrum stuff. This is not like today I've decided not to be that. No, we all have this. I myself too. It's just a spectrum of it. Like how far are you on this side of fixed mindset and perfect branding and perfect languaging and everything has to be perfect before you <laughs> or everything is set up for you funnels so that you start to feel like an imposter or start to feel artificial or something. Something's not, doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel heartfelt, heart-based the way you market yourself, right? It's on, it's on the one side here. And on the other up the, I'm, opposite side is like, give up on everything. I'm not going to, I'm just going to pray for clients. I'm going to wait for clients to come to me, but it should be right. Word of mouth. That's really how the most noble way of marketing is just to not market yourself and just, you do good work. I'm supposed to just do good work and people are supposed to talk about me and I get all the clients I want. Just or 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 having been burned from this other side and just like exhaustion, burnout, and it's like no marketing at all. Right. Or um you don't think you have the budget. So you just do no marketing, you don't know how to do it, and you, everything looks so fake and artificial and pumped, hyped up, and you just want to you want to be in that world. So you just do none of it. That's the other end of the spectrum. I think most of us are somewhere in between, but some people you know are are like that. They just like, okay, 15 years later, I don't barely have any clients because I don't do any marketing. <laughs> and I thought word of mouth is the way I, I heard that word of mouth is the way most people get clients. That's a common misconception, by the way. Word of mouth is the baseline for how all of us get clients for sure. But word of mouth doesn't happen on its own until you do stuff. And then word of mouth starts, right? It's like, it's not, so these, these two ends of the spectrum, right? Um, yeah, Erica, you have a good point here or, or attachment trauma. So visibility is triggering. Yeah. So, so many great comments in here, which uh, you can find below the video because some of you are willing to re repost it later. Thank you for that. Um, so what is the middle way? And uh, the way that I'm always trying to teach and trying to model is I'll call it organic sustainable growth mindset instead of instantly impressive which is again on the fixed mindset part you're supposed to like website branding copy design funnel ads content offers everything instant i want to instantly impress like like you fall into that mindset and if you're a little bit wiser you're like oh i just want to instantly impress the right people the people who are less wise and want to instantly impress everyone they just haven't defined who their right people are so the wiser you are, the more instantly impressed the right people. But even instantly impressed, I don't want to do because it's too much work and it's too artificial and it's too, I, I recognize my spirit says that's fixed mindset stuff. I don't care about instantly impressed. In fact, I don't want to impress anybody. In fact, I'm not even going to try to look attractive. I mean, look at me. I look at my background, right? I mean, this is somewhat calming. That's the point I'm going for. But my stuff is, I make mistakes all the time and I, I forgive myself all the time and I don't care about my mistakes anymore. And I feel like this is where, I don't want to say mar marketing enlightenment or something like that, like, like, like spiritual enlightenment, right? Is where somebody basically doesn't give a fuck anymore about the things that we ought not to give fucks about. Like, Marketing enlightenment is like that. I don't give a fuck anymore what people think of me. Um, I What I care more about is consistent. So consistency is another word for, for this middle way. I care about growth, my personal growth. I care about service to humanity. And I care about consistently showing up for that. That's all I care about. My marketing is about that too. That's my marketing is just about consistently showing up to practice, right? Like even the spiritually enlightened people, they go, oh, I don't have to practice anymore. Probably not. I know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not spiritually enlightened, so I don't know. But like, I imagine the most spiritually enlightened people still show up for practice. I, I believe, show up for prayer, show up for meditation, show up for yoga, show up for service, right? As a practice, even though sometimes they might not feel like it. I, I think that's, again, I have no idea. You can tell me. If you're enlightened, please chop it, chop it low <laughs> and tell us. Or, or if you know someone who's enlightened, please chop it low. Do they still show up for practice of personal growth and service? I, I think they probably do. So that's the middle way. And that's, 
I don't give a fuck about my branding and, and copywriting and design. I really don't because it shows up automatically over the years. It, it becomes automatically better. I, I mean, that's, so I'm going to give you in the next lesson, I'll give you a formula for how that happens. That it gets automatically better. And this is where we can start setting targets. So, so the middle way is the growth mindset, which is the idea of intentionally practicing consistently, knowing that you're, instead of the fixed mindset saying, I have to look this good, I have to copy that person, I have to copy this image within myself, project this image of, and I have to be like that, okay? Success vision or whatever. The growth mindset says, I, I don't know what my potential is. My potential is unknown because it's unlimited actually. I'm not going to fix myself on a particular potential because it's unlimited. All I know is if I show up to practice, I probably get better over time. That's all I know. That's all I know. If I show up consistently to practice, whether it's writing, making videos, doing copywriting, design, working on my branding. I'm not saying it's bad to work on branding. No. I'm saying that it's illusory to expect perfect branding at the start. But what I am saying is your branding gets better over time with practice, with showing up and doing the work, right? So, so that's what I am trying to model. And what happens is, here's the, here's the brilliant thing about this, this model. As you walk this path, you naturally draw to you others who resonate with your light and with your warmth. You know why? Because you are becoming brighter. Not artificially brighter, but grounded and genuinely brighter. And really the secret of business is very simple. You just have to be so damn good that they can't ignore you anymore. That's really the pathway. That's the overall pathway. It's like you either have to look so damn good they can't ignore you, which is brand, which is like fixed mindset, possibly, right? If it's not grounded, it's fixed mindset, imposter syndrome stuff. And then people like crumble and crash and they can't be sustainable like me year after year after year after year after year. Um, I recently told a story of one of my um, mentors from 2009 when I first started my business, looked up to her, Andrea J. Lee. I still do, by the way. Um, and already she was a luminary already 2009 when I started my business over the years, I'm grateful to have gotten to know her a bit. And she just told me recently, George, one of the reasons I stopped doing business coaching and business programs is because of you. I now refer a bunch of people to you because I don't have to do it anymore. I mean, she's doing leadership stuff, but she also said you show up year after year after year. And the, the, uh, uh, sort of the, the subtext was that so many others we know have quit, have not shown up year after year after year because it's been like, so this is the problem with fixed mindset. It's like, looks amazing. And then you crash, try to look amazing again and you crash. And yes, you might, if you stay with it, you might grow over time at, on average, but it's very stressful. <laughs> it's like highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows. It's very taxing on one system. Whereas the growth mindset stuff, it's just a little bit of tax every day. <laughs> yeah, you have to show up and there's a bit of tax to that. But, but, but what happens is it's not dramatically so that you like kill yourself, right? You, you kill your health and your, your willpower. But you, you, when you tax yourself a little bit every day, you're growing the muscle a little bit more every day and you're growing your light a little bit more month by month, year by year. And so that's why I'm, I'm still here. I'm still very joyfully, productively working where a lot of my peers that I started with in 2009, they're... They're now working corporate. They're no longer around. They, they couldn't sustain this, right? Fixed mindset stuff. So middle way is more like this. Very, very, very sustainable, very gradual. But, but that's the problem. It's gradual. So you're going to see the ad saying, uh, I, I make $30 million last year. And I help you also to make millions. And it's, it's like, you know, because they don't tell you that it's like this. It's very dramatic. You're going to have crashes. And, you know, whereas for me, it's gradual. So that's the, that's the problem of following my path 
is that you have to be you have to practice patience. That's one of the practices. You have to practice patience. Um, not that you can't make money soon. You might, you might, but it's all ground. It's all very grounded, and the pricing you charge and the the the, the offers you promise are all so grounded that you have no you have no doubt virtually that you can deliver well, um, and deliver value, and you do. Over time, you deliver more and more value. So, so this is the the middle way that I'm trying to teach, and I I, I just look at myself, and that's basically what I've been doing because I started off 2009 to 2013 with this, and then I crashed 2012, 2013. I crashed and restarted everything in 2014, and now it's been like this, and it's been like it's been amazing since 2014. It's like oh my gosh, this is sustainable. This is actually I can do this for the next 40 years and be happy doing it because I'm growing stronger. By the month, my muscles are getting stronger. My creativity muscles, my launch muscles, my net carrying muscles, all the stuff that I talk about, it's getting more joy. My joyful productivity muscles are getting stronger. And that's what I wish for you. It's like, really, what we need is at the end of the day is not a funnel, an amazing funnel system. That's not what we actually need at the end of the day is to be better. That's really it. Like you have to just be so damn good at your skill, your, your mastery of your craft. Like you have to be so good at what you do and at the content you produce, your creativity, in other words, and at your organizational skills, your joy for productivity. Like if you got good at those things, you could sustain this for, for, for life, for a hundred years, however long you live. You know, it's not, not rather than promise of let's make a millions of dollars and then retire. doesn't work that way. I mean, it, everyone's tried, right? And it doesn't, it just makes you want to quit, right? Okay, so... In the next lesson, we'll talk about the formula of how to actually apply this. So uh, we'll, let's get going.